Thanks for tuning in. This podcast is intended solely for the purpose of personal growth and not as a replacement for professional psychological support. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests of this show are not meant to be taken as medical advice. It is very important to seek the help of a qualified medical practitioner when making any shifts to psychiatric medication you may be taking, or if you are experiencing extreme psychological distress. Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adults ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. How are you doing? On today's podcast, we will be discussing finding the ideal job as a hunter type. This is a topic we really haven't fully explored, and this is going to be a really good episode. We are joined by our illustrious co-host, Batman Saram. He will be with us, and he'll be sharing his journey over the last couple of years of going from a job that really did not, was not a good fit, and how that affected his life, to going to a job that really was a is a good fit and now because of that uh there's so many other areas of his life that are now opening up especially his creative endeavors so it's going to be a really good episode please stay tuned i think we're going to cover a lot of really important topics that um that sort of center around how do you make a living what are you doing and how can that be adjusted either at your current job or finding even a better job to uh to make that happen so stay tuned for that so before we get going i have a very exciting announcement to make we will be launching our official hunter type support group starting in september this is something that people have been asking for over and over and over again, which is a weekly call, a support call with fellow hunter types where you're checking in on all the key areas of your life so you can get the support, build those habits, and and really integrate all the things that we talk about on the podcast. So we'll be starting on September 10th and going through October 29th. So that'll be a two-month session. We'll probably do more after this, but this will be the first two-month session. We'll be doing four calls a month. And the the time that we decided on was Tuesdays at 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. So that's my time. I'm in California. Uh, If you're on on Easter time, that will be 6 uh, to 7.30 p.m., If you are in Australia, many of you have requested in Australia, there's quite a few of you now uh, that are listeners, uh, for for some kind of workshop or group uh, in your time zone that's not landing in the middle of the night, uh, this this should work for you. So depending on where you are in Australia, it'll probably be around 8 to 9.30 a.m. on Wednesdays. So I hope that works for you. Uh, Again, what we'll be covering is 
I, I think the key, uh, the key aspect to making any uh, change in your life is the consistency piece. And, and especially once a week towards the beginning of the week can be really helpful in planning your week and setting a good trajectory for your week. So we'll be discussing follow through and building good habits, time and task management, uh, health support. So if you're wanting to get into a good cardio routine, we'll be discussing that as well. And then also just open forum for people to ask questions. Uh, but we're going to really try to keep that like I do with my coaching calls. We're going to really try to keep it dialed into things that you can integrate right now. Um, I, I like taking uh, conceptual questions, but really what I find works as a coach and working with you guys is picking very specific areas where you either you're challenged or there's goals that you really, really want to achieve. And we just laser in on what are the next steps? What can you do right now in the next couple of days to really make some progress? And again, I'm, I'm pulling so much of from, from what I do in my coaching sessions. So uh, in, there's a form that you've heard me discuss before uh, that I keep with all my coaching sessions, which is re- reviewing goals first, then uh, discussing wins and challenges. What are the things that have, have been achieved? What are the things that have been challenging for you? Then the bulk of that call, the, the call usually is brainstorming and support. So just asking questions, getting clarity on some pieces, prioritization, and then finally getting to those action items that you can put on your schedule. So i um, very excited. I've spent a lot of time formulating this, so I didn't want to launch it before I felt like we had a really good form that could mirror what I do with coaching. So uh, if you're interested, uh, go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash group. So that's drummerinthegreatmountain forward slash group. Or uh, you can click on, I've changed some of the links in the menu on Drummer in the Great Mountain. Just click on the courses link and you'll be able to get it there as well. So I hope you can join us. Um, We will close this at some point. So uh, I'm going to set a cap on it. So uh, if you're interested, I would say do it and join now because uh, every single workshop we've done filled up. So if you can... If you're really interested, it's been on your plate for a while to get some kind of support. And especially if coaching has been a little expensive for you, then uh, I think this will be more reasonable because you'll be getting four calls for the price of one, what I usually charge for one coaching session per month. So um, check it out. Uh, if you have any questions, drop me an email at info at drummerinthegreatmountain.com. And again, it's drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash group and we'll be sending out an emailing in the next couple days check the description uh the podcast description uh there'll be a link in there as well okay so today's topic is finding a hunter type friendly job we have with us batman saram batman saram i always please forgive me i always tweak your name you're probably sick of it by now it's not the only time it's been tweaked my friend it's fine (laughs) No, you should it's, learn it. I should yeah. learn it by now, though. It's because we don't hang out enough. We live in the same town, and we haven't seen each other in a year. Oh so, my gosh, we've been both been super busy. Welcome, thank you, thank for you, man, joining us. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like a, a, an old warm blanket. It's good to good to be here with with you and, and everyone. And I've been, of course, I've been listening, and you and I have been in touch as we always are. So you know, it's it's one of those things. It's like those friendships you have with people who you don't see them in, in five ten years, but every time. You get together after five minutes. It's like no time has passed. So. Every, everything so, comes right back. Yeah, yeah. It's always good to uh, be with you, man. Uh, it, well, you've been through a lot. You've had a full – I know we both had pretty full years since we've it's talked. It's been an interesting year for both of us, my friend. There's no doubt. So, well, one of the, so what we were talking about before going on air here was your journey with – transforming your work life, your job, and how that has opened up all these other doors for you creatively. And so Mm -hmm. I thought today this would be a really good topic for us to explore. We've never really honed in on the specific topic of finding a hunter-type friendly job, but I think you are the living example of what happens when the right job shows up that Mm -hmm. maximizes your strengths and also gives you space in your life for your creative endeavor. So maybe we should zoom back a little bit before we're going into like the current work and talk about what has been 
the challenges for you in the past that has really, you know, had not only had an effect on your well-being, your probably your self-esteem, but also your home life and all that. You want to like kind of, I know it's, it's like hard to talk about, but I think we should probably get into that before we, so we can have context going into how the new job has affected things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think, uh, let's see where, where to start. The one thing I, you and I were talking um, before rolling um, about this concept that you know I recall back to when when I was actively uh, co-hosting and 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 being on this on this program with you and just having the conversations we did. I think the first year and a half of us doing this podcast, when I was doing it regularly, if you remember, and it was always an editorial opinion. I remember I would always say that when we were on the show, right? I would say this is just my opinion. And I remember looking back, I think a lot of that around this 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 topic of the job for a hunter type was from a perspective and a paradigm that it's at some point you're going to have to just – because I was, right? I was being transparent about what I was going through. I was in an acceptance stage of a hunter type is going to have to accept that they're not going to like their day job unless it's that artistic thing or that endeavor, that entrepreneurial thing that they actually want to do, but it just hasn't worked out. And so therefore, this is how you're going to feel. You have to use this book and these techniques so you can make it through that. And mm-hmm. that still holds true. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying that that, that part doesn't hold true. What I was um, happily mistaken about was that you can have a day job that fits. You can have a day job that is not directly your art or your entrepreneurship. Yeah. But it serves a side of your hunter type personality, so therefore you can at least enjoy it. And I didn't think that was possible back then. So I'm here to tell you. What did we say uh, the last time I was at your um, your place before you guys moved? Yes. We did a show, I remember. And I think you reminded me today that one of the last things I said was I was in between jobs. I didn't know how the new job was going to go, how it was going to fit in the hunter type life, yada, yada, yada. And I think I said, stay tuned. So here we are. And a year later, we revealed to you, <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's it's a happy ending right now. It's um, – look, there are still going to be times during the day of that day job for the hunter type. You're going to have those feelings. I just want to run outside and be not here. Yes. I want to be a hunter. I'm, I'm not here to tell you those feelings don't come across. But what happens is, is when you realize, so this is where your techniques have continued to flow through my life. And this book has continued to flow through my, my life is, wait a minute. Let's go to the tools, right? The yeah. tools that are in, in the book and, and the stuff, that, the tools that we talked about on the podcast. Yes. You haven't done your meditation in a couple of days. You know that's key to the calm mind, that quiet mind. Yeah. Um, you know, the observation of, hey, I think I've been a little carb heavy. Maybe that's why I'm feeling like this. And lo and behold, you start implementing the tools to realize, hey, 80% this day job fits me. In past, it was the it was inverse. It was twenty percent. This job fits me. Eighty percent is good. Go, and you know, for a hundred type, I can't I can't speak for all hundred types. It turned out after forty blah, 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 aging myself after forty four <laughs> years on this planet. Yes, turned out the job for this hunter type was being a pre sales engineer, what they call a consultant these days, because in pre sales, unlike when I was doing post sales in the software world and being a programmer, something you and I have talked about is, is a part of our, our life and our past. Yes. When you're that programmer person, that to me, and I, and I could be wrong, this is my opinion, I do feel like that's, maybe it's not 100%, but it is more leaning toward being a farmer type, being a programmer for a day job, because there's a lot of long periods mm. of working on the same thing, yeah. troubleshooting a bug. Yep. You know, just trying to get that new feature of the application to work and it's just not working. And that's where I, I know for me looking back, yeah, that's where it started to harm me being a hunter type. In pre-sales, you and I were talking about this one after about a year on the job. I've been at this job a year and a half. After a year on the job, I think you and I have texted. I've, t- I've called you from business trips where I'm like, this fits me. Yeah. It's like, hey, we need a presentation on Monday in Las Vegas. 
And, you know, you're, you're in regions when you're in pre-sale for most companies. And I'm so blessed, like beyond blessed, 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 blessed. Yes. This job in this company because everything is in the West Coast. So it's not like I'm leaving my family for two weeks. Hey, need you to go to Vegas for a day, do a presentation, come back or come back the next day. Yeah. Hey, I need you to drive to L.A. for two days. Now let's talk about why that fits. Yeah. Oh, why let, does let, that... let me stop. Yo, you go ahead, let's go, go back a little bit because I want to make sure because sure. I think there's a lot of people listening right now that are in a job sure. where it doesn't fit. And I think right. we need to touch on a couple of the pieces that didn't work like if you look back especially at the previous job which was really difficult on you well I watched yeah, that's it a really whole other like, story <laughs> yeah you don't have to mention you watched names. it all melt down into a puddle of goo yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> so but one of the things that i saw it did is it really it carried over into your home life it Big really time. like had an effect on your family too sure yeah um what so were the actually, big things that, that you feel like yeah, you actually, didn't have you did you didn't have then that you have now that are the the key yeah. things that, that when it clicked with this new job you're like this this is working. And well it's funny um that's a it's brilliant for you to step back like that because I think now I'm realizing there's a little bit of a paradox here which is in the last job last last job yeah um it was a startup environment and all that. I don't think startup environment – on the surface, you would think the startup <laughs> environment works yes. for a hunter type. OK. I'll speak once again for just this hunter type talking to you. Nah, no. Yes, startup type is go, 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 go. Yeah. But it's go, go, go in a much different way and there's so much more on the line yeah. that I think that part mm -hmm. of it yeah. we don't do so well under. Hey, there are days with this job. Like I just was giving an example before. It's kind of where I was going. Hey, you need to go to Vegas. Great. What do I got to do? I got two days to get. I know it's two days, not enough time to get a presentation together, but that's what we get paid for. Let's do it. And you've got a supportive team. That's key, right? Yeah. I work now for a company where the culture is inverse of any other culture I've worked for. And that's big for a hunter type too, which is that if you need help, you will not be judged for it. In mm. fact, you will have a swarm, a wolf pack of people hmm. who genuinely, when you put a message out into the internal company messenger and says, I need help with this, I'm having – you will get 10 responses. And then the next thing you know, you're working with someone who just wants to help you make the sale. Obviously, it benefits them, right? Yeah. I'm not saying there's no whatever. But that works. So now even though you're under pressure, you've got fellow people who are also like, hey, I got a demo too. I got to do – so what's here now that wasn't there then is – a, that, yeah. the fact that the way I'm asked to jump support. around. Support. Support. Yeah. Huge, right? The way I'm asked to jump around fits my rhythm and my style. Good. And there's not everything on the line. Yeah. It's not, are, it's not make or break every single time. Exactly. Moment. Look, are there huge deals that I'm working on? Absolutely. I'm not going to hear to tell you that. There's pressure. I didn't say that. Nothing – I think that's the other thing to, to break out of. I'll be real honest with you with a quick digression. I realize about myself and I have at least 10 hunter type friends, one of them who I've known 25 years, genius guitarist, um, plays two notes of the guitar. He lives in the Bay Area and he just has you weeping. He's just one of those that mute. My point is I've observed in his hunter typeness and it's something him and I have talked about. He knows. I've seen something in his hunter typeness that says, well, and mine too, by the way, so it's a reflection. Unless the environment is exactly set for me, um, yeah. it's not going to work, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's got to be it's a It's all or nothing. It's all. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And so then we self-sabotage a little Classic bit. Classic hunter type attitude. Yeah. It's yeah. just all or yeah. nothing. And that's, I work a lot it's, with coaching clients, like trying to chip away at that a little bit and trying that's to see it. Like, that, but that's us though. Yeah. That's, that is a superpower, right? <laughs> if, <laughs> if placed in a certain context. Yes, exactly. It's this, it's, it's the laser beam coming from your eyes that if you point it at something destructive, it's going to blow something up. But if you're pointing it at something that needs heat to warm up to, do something in the area of – I was going there with a parallel and I lost the analogy. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. It's yes. a superpower which, yes, absolutely. If and I think that. the key thing is we've been talking about your new job and me tuning into it. And I think it's going to be different for everyone listening because everyone's going to have their own version of it. What I think is most important to note is when you find the right 
niche and the right job, which may not be exactly what you're thinking in the moment. Cause, right. cause for you, I mean, if I, if you don't mind me saying like the previous job, which we won't talk too much about other than it was on paper, like the perfect job, right? It, exactly. was, it was doing the kinds of things that you were interested in. <laughs> it was creative, but because of the really? work environment, because of perhaps management and other things that it wasn't quite a good fit. And so, well, no, let's spell it out. you because your point is so brilliant. The last job was exactly that. Oh, I found a job that is not corporate. It's going to give back to the world. This is what I've been asking for. This is where I belong. Not so much, right? That's yeah. trying to fit everything. Uh, it, it, you know, I'll take a pay cut. I, I'll, I'll pay for my own help, family's health insurance. Like what an idiotic decision mm -hmm. based on this all or nothing paradigm. Yeah. It has to be a job that gives back to the world. You know what? No, it doesn't. Because the irony is that if you get out of that all or nothing, you will genuinely, not contrived, genuinely be able to live with 80-20 rule. Hey, yeah. I like this job 80%. Yeah. Because man, when you actually, obviously I'm talking about what I know, when you actually get there, and get into that headspace, the things that open up, like then doing the things you want to do, are miraculous. Yeah. They're miraculous. And by the way, the second thing, because you did ask, I want to I make sure I'm clear that wasn't there before. Yeah. In this job, in this role, which there's tons of these roles in the technical and I think in other worlds, yeah. my job is to walk in a room and blow people away with the words that come out of my mouth with <laughs> co genuine charisma. Yeah genuine belief in what I'm selling in the software, yeah. not contrived. In fact, it's what I love about this company. They don't want you to be contrived. They want you to know it so well that when you speak about it in a, in a good way and saying how amazing it is, you believe it. Yeah. I, I mean, for goodness sakes, in my job, the motto is go put on a Hamilton. Hamilton is yeah, play. a Broadway play. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like just turn, what turn better it up. Thing, what a better thing for an artist. Yes. What better thing for an artist hunter type to say, you mean I have to put on a show every two or three days and I get to <laughs> right. and I get to fly to Vegas to do it? Well, gee, that feels a little bit like being a showman, doesn't it? Yes. Wow, how amazing. Because, but yet, does it fit that other um, requirement? Or no, it doesn't necessarily give back to the world the, the way the other one appeared to. But, but it's benign. Hurt. I mean, knowing the job, it's it's a benign job. Of it's, course. it's not like you're yes. you're, you're <laughs> yeah. selling selling a you know bogus insurance to somebody. It's, right, it's, right, it's right. Actually, it's it, it's just it's benign. It doesn't. It's just well, it's in the world, but it's supporting you and it's supporting yes. your family. So here, what I would like to get into then is let's start talking about like what it is done for your like. Let's start to 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 tease this a little bit, what, because you've been able to settle into a job that it's a good fit, it doesn't require, it's not, there's not a lot of tediousness to the job. It doesn't sound like it's like you're more, your, your, your hunter type abilities are really, uh, utilized and encouraged at the job. Can we agree to that? Absolutely. hundred percent. So what has this provided you? Like, tell me the difference, like in, in headspace, but also then maybe you can start talking a little bit about other things that you've gotten moving as a result of shifting to this job. Headspace. That was a word we used to use a lot, huh? Yeah. Um, back, in, back in the days of doing this show. Yes. Because the we, old we used job to do took up all your headspace. I remember watching you and it was yeah. always with you. It was always with you. Whereas this, because it's this kind of um, abstracted – approach to putting on a show every every few days yes. um once the show is done the show is done i mean there's follow-up phone calls emails i'm not saying that but you're right but when you're working in a startup and you feel like if i don't if i don't work till midnight tonight mm -hmm. like we could all be out of jobs tomorrow yeah when it's that extreme oh, yeah, no that, way man you buckle you buckle I don't and care it was never – okay, so I want to stop there because there's a key hunter type tendency mm -hmm. here, which is that you ramp up. You, you work you, – we work in sprints. So you could ramp up. You do it. Mm -hmm. You achieve yep. it. You go out and you, you, you go on the hunt and then you come right. back and you rest. 
and then you do it and you build it back up again and then you re- and it sounds like that tendency is really part of this job part of the one now yes this yeah. turn job and 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 by the way you could call this luck when you work in a place where you have bosses and bosses of bosses saying like hey team x you guys worked your butts off this week like take the afternoon off friday go go be with your families yeah. it's not having to be begged for it's actually encouraged to get that downtime yeah we we have a program with the health insurance company where if you report to the health insurance company with a fitbit or whatever it is these days you literally get cash for working out and getting health points because it checks you into the gym and it see and it, and if you go to the gym enough and by the way if you get your partner your wife your husband on the program they count towards and you start gaining health points they literally call them health points wow now it's not breaking the bank it's yeah. a nice dinner if you get the my point is not that it's the look at the intention yeah. that you're working in a place that wants you to be that healthy because it's important to them. And, you know, I got to note this because I have um, I'm working with someone right now who is in a poorly managed company yeah, and that's the they worst. don't realize, worst. you know, as we were we've been talking, they don't realize just the level of incompetence going on at their job. That they are then using the ADHD label and saying, I'm broken because I can. And when I talk to them, like within 20 minutes, I'm like, okay, this is not you. You are in a very toxic work Uh, environment. Right, right, right. It's uh, it's an abused partner syndrome. After a while, you think it's you. Yeah. But you've been hit in the head. Oh, yeah. Well, let's call a spade a spade. Wasn't my last experience before this job exactly that? Yeah. I mean, you and I talked and – and there were literally days that you had to make me realize you are – that I was coming from a place of that it's me. Yeah. So, yeah. And see, look right. at the difference now. Like you are – you're given space to do what you do best. Mm. The cycles are – and this is what I liked about doing – when I did do design work, I really did enjoy that because you'd have a project. You'd ramp up. There was a lot of creative energy. There's the burn. And it, they were only maybe two to three months. So it's mm-hmm. a good cycle and then you're done and then you, you taper down, you get ready for the next one. If you have all those going all the time and there's never like – if you've got just too many things spinning, then you don't get that natural – what I think hunter types need is that the you go on the hunt and you achieve the hunt. You come back and then you get a chance to rest. And That's if your it. job doesn't provide that – and sometimes what I find in coaching is – if you have enough space in your job, you can create that for yourself. So mm-hmm. it's not necessarily you have to bail on your current job right. in order to get that. Sometimes you can tweak things and, and a lot of times you can to adjust the current job to work within your tendencies. Sometimes you can talk to upper management and say, hey, this, this works for me. This doesn't. I think more and more, as you're saying, companies are interested in how to utilize people's talents and abilities and optimize them so it, it only helps them if you're do if you're functioning optimally a good company is going to support that they're not going to say no, no no this is how we do it that's so old school and i think that is slowly but surely moving out of the workforce because startups and new companies are finding this is a better approach which is how do you find out what this person's really good at find out their net, their natural tendencies and lean lean into them versus forcing them into boxes that don't work for them and Brilliantly put because now ping ponging – now I'm really wearing the old familiar blanket or sweater because now I, now we're, you and I are just bouncing off each other like we used to. Yeah. It's a great feeling. Um, what were you just saying? Hunter type. Hello. Oh, there we go. The real is – so there's – it's it's you know a lot of it sounds woo woo and a lot of spiritual teachers and books talk about it. But I love the concept of being the observer, mm-hmm. right? Being yeah. the observer. So that's key for a hunter type, and we've talked about that. That's why your book talks about um, the meditations and how important yes. that kind of stuff is. It takes that one second of if you can be the observer when you're in that job that you're pretty much being abused yes. and it's toxic and you think it's you and now you're in a cycle, a negative spin cycle where you think it's you so you don't think it's the environment. If you take that one second of being the observer and realize, wait a minute, exactly what you said. That's why you coach people. You're not broken. The thing you're in is broken. 
there's that little bit of light, which then you will then when you go yes. to sit down to apply to your next job. That's right. You know what to look for. That's right. I, I will tell you, I was in such a desperate and dark place after getting laid off from that terrible, terrible environment for me. Yes. Um, and I was unemployed and I was down in the dumps and we talked about it in the last episode. But because I had now – it took being broken to see that light. Yeah. I manifested the job I'm in now. Yeah. I could just tell by – and when – now it was a little stroke of luck. When that friend who I hadn't talked to in 18 years, we started a startup company in San Diego, literally hadn't talked to him in 18 years, pops up on LinkedIn with a with job offer to his company and he calls me and we connect right away. And the second line out of his mouth is, Batman, I really think you're going to like it here. He's been there 10 years by the way. It's a really good culture. And I was like, for him to say that, I'm feeling something here. And – and by the way, it wasn't easy. It's, you know, to be in a great job in a great company. I mean, it, you, Boy, you the training. I remember the training. The training is three the weeks away. Yeah. You're away on the East Coast. You're away from family. It is brutal training to learn this software. But you know what? You realize I knew the whole time this is what I need. I knew the whole time, especially then as you get into training. Wow, this is really going to fit who I am. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't – and the, I'm not kidding you. The whole time – because I talked to you when I was in training. Remember, we talked a yes. couple times. I said, I'm seeing something here, Michael. I'm seeing that this is the job for the hunter type. And I felt it then and now all it is has been a year and a half of validation. Yeah, and, I've been, and I'm just watching the rest of you. So well, let's get into it. So what has happened – and I think you need to go back to the first event and then now what you're working yeah, on Yeah, sure. Now. And let's talk a little bit about that because what this job has done is open up space for you to do all of the other things that you most care about and things have really manifested for you. So why don't you share a little bit about that? Yeah, thanks, brother. Um, as you know, and uh, yeah, happy to share with, uh, with our, with our um, drummer in the Great Mountain community. I'm happy to say that after a little bit of dis stilling period or the recipe really coming together and like realizing, wow, look at the kind of job I get to do and being grateful for it and taking care of those things that hunter types need to take care of. All of a sudden this space opened up and I'm not talking about a lot of space. As you guys know, I'm a father, I'm yep. a husband and I have a full-time job. So there's not a lot of space, but with a little bit that was, the hunter type was like, okay. The, the artist hunter type, it's like, uh, I'm feeling something all of a sudden there was space to even think about what I want to do next in my music career. Yes. Um, and for those that are just joining us, you know, I had a full-time thriving music career. It became a, not a full-time thing, but always had a band and the band's been growing together over the last 15 years. We've put out four albums. We've been all pro musicians. We're doing our thing. But then this idea came to me, long story short, I went to the band one day. I said, I don't know where this is coming from, but I think we should put on a musical. I think we should think of ourselves as a, as a band, like as, as part of a play. And those are the words that started kind of tripping out of my mouth. And I think it should be using my family story, fleeing, um, fleeing the revolution in Iran, like a million other Iranians did in 1979, and coming to America and what that's about and the identity crisis and all this stuff you go through. No politics. It's – I don't want – it has zero to do with politics. Yes. I was very emphatic about that. I said I just want to tell not ego, not my family story. I want to use my family story to have music tell the story of all people who had to – a million people went through this. Yes. Let their story be heard through this vehicle. Of course, the band said they're in. Uh, this was in 2018. We worked our butts off, all of us, with day jobs, meaning when we got back to our individual homes, everybody went to work. Somebody's working on the composition for song number two. Somebody's working on the script. We made this homegrown little play called The Night of Love and Unity, um, storytelling through music. And this little band that could, <laughs> you know, sold out 130 people at a beautiful uh, the Vision Spiritual Center in, in downtown San Diego. Yep. And I got to live the dream. I finally did it. I brought music and storytelling in my life together, and the band did it. We all did it together. And so now let me talk about, to keep it in context of why we're here. Yes. The whole time, I, I was telling you this as I was going through it last year. I said, this is amazing. I've become a machine. <laughs> like I've never felt like this before. 
I have never had a checklist for a check. That's not a haunter type thing to do. I had a to-do list because finally the day job that fit me allowed just enough room. And by the way, let me be clear. There were times this day job took all of my time because if I was out on a trip Monday through Thursday, by the time I get home, I'm done. The weekend is literally recover. I didn't have time to work on my music. But it was okay because I knew it would be there. I knew that I had built enough of a foundation to get back to it and get ready for it. So long story short, we did a premiere of the Love and Unity musical theatrical experience in October. And, you know, um, every little uh, – or every good story has these like milestones. And one of the milestones in this story is that there was a professor from the University of California, San Diego, and also University of California, Irvine. She's actually been a friend of 15 years, but we're both busy with family, hardly see each other. She finally made it out to a show like which she hadn't been in like five years. Saw what we put on, approached me the next day and said, there is a grant from the university and they are offering it now to artists. And this grant is for – usually grants at universities are for professors and researchers. Um, and it's from the Critical Refugee Studies Collective. That's the group on campus. Um, but now they're – opening up an artist application. I think we should apply and let me help you draw out a proposal. I've never done a proposal for you. What's who draws a proposal for a university to get a grant? I'm not a professor. I've never done this. She's like, I'll guide you. I just need your blessing that your idea I think could be bigger. I think we could tell the story of all immigrants from all walks of life. Me thinking, huh, we don't have a shot at this. (laughs) Sure. We stayed up a few nights, wrote the proposal, wrote the budget. Literally, I put it out there with like, come on, let's get serious. Three months later, we found out we won. (laughs) We got the freaking grand. Be careful what you wish for. And in 2019, my life has been putting this next iteration on, and it's called um, Refugee Songs, A Musical Journey. It's at the UCSD uh, Theater called the Mandeville Theater. It's 650-plus people. And the beauty of um, working with a commissioned show, which is what this is from the university, is that we don't want to, A, B, you can't make more money than you're making from the grant. So we get to make this show for the first time in this band's existence, a major theatrical show, a big time show that a year of our blood, sweat and tears is going into is free to the public. It's premiere night is free and we want – 600 people there to share in this experience of storytelling and music and poetry. Um, We just hired our four actors. Like this is a real thing. This is the full-blown thing. And why are we telling this? This is not an ego trip for the audience that knows me. All of this has a point to, to, to where we are with Michael and this book and this podcast. None of this is possible if I don't first years ago reach out to Michael and found someone that walks my walk and knows what it is to be this hunter type that we are and follow the book and use the tools and go through all these changes and all these challenges. And now here we are to a point that I was telling you, like I've changed as a musician. I used to be the typical like hunter type musician show to practice. Oh, what song were we working on? I don't know. Yeah, let's just play. Okay. That's cool. (laughs) <laughs> that guy's gone. <laughs> He's gone. He's been replaced with a musical director who has a worksheet. I think I told you this, Michael. Never in my life did I think I would have a worksheet for the band that says – maybe I've gone too much on the other side. The band would probably tell you. Um, we're going to spend 45 minutes on composition number one. We're going to spend 30 minutes on composition number seven before the intermission. I've never been this organized. I've never <laughs> wanted to – here's the key, I think, brother. I've never wanted to be this organized. But when you're inspired like this yes. and it's all flowing, that's it. how could you want to? So that's, there you go. That's it. And, and, you know, I just want to highlight, I mean, this is, this is huge because this really pulls together all of the different threads that you've been working on for a long time creatively. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is just, this is, it's so amazing to watch this. Uh, unfold because it really it's beyond anything that you could even have set as a goal right it just sort of came into being as you got your life balanced out there's space for this thing to just show up right in your lap it came to you so what is that 
I think it goes, it's like flashing in my head. I'd be remiss if I didn't take our audience back to what you just said a few minutes ago. It's, it's that recognition that it's not you, it's the environment you're in. And if you're not feeling that space in what you're doing, then go find it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there has to be a willingness. There has to be. Go, I guess, okay. Go find it knowing it's possible. And if my story, right, that's the whole point you and I wanted to do this right now. If my story is one concrete example for you as in the years when I was a regular doing this this podcast with Michael, I would always be transparent about what's happening in my life. Now I'm being transparent on this side too. I am telling you it's possible, Hunter Types. It's 100% possible. You just have to realize that you are worth – I think there's it's a worth thing. Yeah. And I know we've talked about it, Michael. Yep. You're worth it. We're worth finding the thing that fits us instead of thinking there's something wrong with us. We're worth – Knowing there is a standard that needs to meet us and not the other way around because we are worth finding that. And then look at all the gifts we can share with others in the world. That's it. That's it. That is really so well put. I think that really kind of sums up what we talk about on the podcast. It's what we created together when we first started this podcast. Is And mm-hmm. the thing that I now, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that I've worked with, well, there's many more that listen to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that I get back the most from this work, and I share these with you a lot, is yep. I don't feel broken anymore. And mm. just when that's lifted off your shoulders, when you see yourself as a whole human being that has specific tendencies, strengths, and challenges, and you know that this is who you are and you own it and you work with it without throwing a label of disorder on top of that, you can still get to the same end. You can still integrate all the tips and techniques without labeling yourself as, and thinking of yourself as broken. And because of it, you, there's like a, all this whole world opens up because mm. you're honoring fully who you are as a being. You're saying, this is who I am. These are my strengths. These are my challenges. How do I work within, within this to maximize my gifts in the world? And I feel like that really is, and that's what, I mean, you're embodying it and you really are like, when I heard this was coming about, I was so excited because I thought this is, this pulls it all together and it's service. Like you were saying before, it's like maybe the job isn't, is benign, but the job is creating the framework because it's giving you the space to have the rest of your life. It's, which is why you're probably here on the planet to do that work mm. and get, you know, doing this play and doing all the things exactly. that you're going to be working on. That's the point. And so, yeah. but the job can't be pulling so much away from you. That's that You it. have no juice at the end of the day to do anything else. And let's face it. Let's call a spade a spade. I don't know that that environment's good for a farmer type either. It's 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 never good. But hundred we we hundred types we we I think break down faster yeah. in those environments that are not made for us. Well, um, yeah, yeah. So that's it. Yeah, it's been it's been um, it's been crazy to you know as I reflect on it in real time talking to you. It's it's pretty ins- and and but you know me, I always give you both sides of the tail. Like I said, don't think there are not days like, oh, about four days ago where I was like, uh, yeah, can't, <laughs> right. can't, can't do this. Nope, 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 nope. Too much, too much on the job side, too much on the family side. Too much. Nope. I can't. Of course, of course, those, those normal. Those days come. Yeah. Those days are going to come. I go through those days and I, and I've created like every single piece of my life. <laughs> Like I've really just designed it from scratch to how I coach to like, it's all been designed by me and me and Cuesta. And there's days where I'm just like, Oh gosh. So not to speak of life life. itself, brother, not to speak of life itself. I mean, the things that I know you've gone through that have nothing to do with uh, being a coach or being a podcast host or being an author, the personal things that you've gone through, the personal things that I've gone through, my my extended family has gone through, those are all part of the game of life. Yeah, I think as a hunter type, if you tend to yourself, here it is again, here's the theme, because you're worth it to exercise, have a low carb, high protein diet yeah. and tend to yourself in those ways. You'll make it through those tough times too. That's right. 
you'll get there. Yep. During it, you might not feel like it, but if but if you're not taking care of yourself, you go. You have very little chance of you. You yeah, got about a zero percent chance. Yeah, because then the brain chemistry kicks in, and then if you have any challenges with depression, those kind of fall on top of that, and then it's just re- then it gets really hard to get up. So, and then, and then the the you can't count fast enough uh, the the markings on the chalkboard of the number of times you'll self sabotage yeah. yourself because when you're in that state, you're not interested in doing the next thing that you can do to better yourself. In fact, there's a part of you that'll want to do the opposite. And it's part of the depression, like you said. Well, and you know, uh, going back to, uh, I don't want to go too deep back into, but I think it's important yeah. when when you have a job or a toxic environment. Sometimes it's a, it's a home environment that is really pulling you down. It's sometimes it's very difficult to make that step up a notch, and it's wow. time. It's times like that if you're listening right now and you're really at bottom then you have to shift the pattern up. You've got to find one thing you can do to jump out of that condition and shift the pattern up. See what you can do to break up your your day-to-day. See if you can reach out to someone for support in terms of friend, life coach, therapist. Do what you need to do to break up the pattern so you can start the trajectory of getting into a better place. I'd be remiss if I didn't, if you're going to make a point like that, let me share with people two quick things on this point. One of them so beautifully done by my brother, Michael. I remember, God, three years ago now, four years ago now, when I was hit with some pretty devastating health news. But it was only devastating health news if I didn't start taking care of myself. Let's put it that way. Totally controllable, right? Yeah. It's not out of control. And I remember the first few days, it was tough. And I'd call my brother, Michael. And I remember that one of the times you said – Don't forget, if all you do right now in this phase is get to the parking lot of the gym, (laughs) right? in that parking, it was like a a ministry to me, those words. I'll never forget them, bro. It's – and I and I and I remember. I think I called you one day from the parking lot. I, I said, "Look, I remember that. I'm not. I don't know what's going to happen after here. I, I can't make any guarantees that there's actually going to be X. I might just go in and observe people working out. But <laughs> but but uh, but in all seriousness, I made it to the parking lot, and that's what you're saying, right? That's that breakout. Yeah. For hunter type, I th- oh, there it is. For hunter type, because we're all or nothing, we think the breakout of that negative cycle is I have to put on clothes, drive to the gym, work out an hour. No, 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 no. Time out. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's teach these brain muscles and life muscles one at a time how to do that. And another quick story I just heard, um, I think it was, I was, uh, on the Pete Holmes podcast. You make it, you made it weird. He's, he's an amazing, amazing comedian and spiritual teacher and all this stuff. Long story short, he, they were telling the story about um, – he's huge now. He's huge. He's a marathon man who's written about running marathons and training for marathons. Oh, here's the catch to the story. He used to be 320 pounds, Yeah. right? And I can't remember the guy's name. So somebody's listening. Someone's to like, they're shouting it at that. Yeah, yeah. Shouting, <laughs> shouting back as they're, they're listening they're, in their car, they're, they're looking like the crazy hunter type that they are. Yeah. Um, apparently in his book, he said – Literally, he said when he was 320, when he had just it, – it, it, it makes me emotional in a good way to know – like this is such a beautiful story to me. I guess he said, you know, I just woke up one day and was like, enough, enough, really enough. And he said, OK, starting tomorrow morning – I think he wrote it down. I can't remember. Starting tomorrow morning. All I'm going to do is get out of bed and put on my shoes because at 320, that's a task. That's a task. Not a football 320. This guy was an obese 320, yeah, yeah. right? There's yeah. a difference. He could barely move. He was bedridden. Yeah. And apparently that's how it went. Wow. And I'm just going to put on the. I'm going to put on the shoe the first few days. Guess what he did next? Next, he said next week. No, no, no. I'm yeah. Next week, I'm going to move the shoes downstairs. Yeah. And the goal is to me, go downstairs and just put them on. Yes. By the way, not even lace them up. Not even lace them up. Just get out of bed. Yeah. Long story short, the shoes then moved by the door. Then they moved outside. Yes. Then there was just taking one step and literally going down the drive. 
the guy runs marathons now and is teaching people about running marathons. Uh, and that's it. And that is the key to doing a marathon. You don't just run a marathon from zero. Exactly. You start with your, your small goal. And, you, and I would, so let's, let's bring it back. And then I want you to, to plug your event because I really – We got to plug. I, we know. We know. Um, okay. So I, one of the things that I think is really important talking about this is if you're looking to shift – your job. You're just like, I'm done with it. I know I can do better. Then my, if I were your coach, what I would say is, okay, the, the 100 type tendency is like, okay, just I'm screw it. I'm out of here. And it's a big, huge blow up. And then after everything settles down, you're like, uh Oh, it's like the, the Larry David thing when he quit SNL. Do you know that story? Uh, no, go ahead. I didn't. <laughs> Class, this, okay, this is a classic hunter type. I'm, I'm sure Larry David's a hunter type. I would put money on it. He goes in. So Larry David, comedian Larry David from uh, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, was a writer on Saturday Night Live. When it, and this was on Seinfeld. It was, it was an episode. Mm-hmm. He goes in. Uh, and he was tired of his stuff not getting on and not getting on and not getting in. So finally he sees one of the guys that's one of the heads up. He says, I'm tired of this. I'm taking it. You guys can take this job. I quit. And he leaves and he walks home. And as he's walking home, he's thinking, you know, that was a lot of money I just walked away from. And, and then he just kept thinking about it. And then he goes to his, his roommate. I just know people know the story probably already. Who was, who, who was the model for Kramer in Seinfeld. And he said, and, and he was talking to him about it. This was his, or not his roommate, his next door neighbor. And the guy says, why don't you just go back the next day? Why don't you go back on Monday and pretend as though nothing ever happened? He's like, oh, wow. I, I could do that. And so he, oh, that's so right. he goes that's back right. the next day and he's just like, as if nothing happened. And he just, Kept going. Well, and then eventually he had his his I don't know what do you call it because um, Jason Alexander played yes. Costanza. Was, Costanza did that in one of the scenes. That's right. So that was that was where that came okay, from. Okay, I got you. So that you could do it that way, or <laughs> you could look at you could say, okay, I have a job right now. Let's scan the horizon a little bit because when you jump out of a job, you create instant instability unless you have money in the bank. So is I, if I were your coach, I would say, uh, okay, wait a second. Spend your off time looking around, scanning the horizon, talking to people. Go from, from where you are now to, to something else instead of having that middle ground where you've potentially created some not so necessary uh, challenges for yourself where you could have left the job in a way that you jumped from that job to another job. Because when you leave a job, the thing that you don't always contemplate if you quit a job is when you don't have a job and your brain is thinking, I don't have a job, it's a lot harder psych- psychologically to, to get back into a job. So mm. it's usually a better idea to stay at your current job, f- like do some network on the side, check in, see what's available so you can jump from that to something else. So I just want to, I think that's the, the warning label on this podcast <laughs> is <laughs> if you're hearing this and hearing Bob and you're feeling inspired, you're like, I'm out tomorrow do it in a shift your job in a smart way. So that's, that's the warning label. Let's wrap it up. So I want to bring, go back to the event. Cause I'd really love to have, sure. cause since you've been on the podcast and as it's, it has grown significantly over the last couple I know, of years, you've hearing, helped yes. give birth to something that is now all over the world and has my baby's growing up. Tens of thousands of listeners at this point, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> so um, I would love for you to, in, you know, if you are in the San Diego area in mm-hmm. October, so yep. why don't you plug the event a little bit? Sure. And like I said, the October, website too. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, the website, all the information will be, by the time this airs, um, we should have more and more information on Mystic groove collective.com you can also go to refugee songs.world either place uh and i'm sure michael you'll put the links on the page for this podcast as well in the links in the description yeah but uh, long story short october 19th ucsd which is in the la jolla area of san diego mandeville theater um free show um the websites will have a link to an eventbrite registration all you have to do is just register and bring that registration ticket so we can track it's first come first serve seating this is this is raw and authentic this is the premiere night of a play that hopefully is going places so you know it's not fancy it's just first come first serve come and enjoy be part and hear the story sing along with us um that's the whole idea this is this is a story and it's real and it's raw 
and it's authentic, but there's also a lot. The, the goal of our shows, no matter what we've done over the last 15 years, has always been to leave the audience with a feeling of joy and connectedness. So mm-hmm. let it not let the topic not dissuade you from the from thinking what this is that we want you by the end of the show the 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 goal is for you to sing along with us on october 19th at ucsd mandeville theater and uh like i said mystic groove collective uh, dot com is the best place to go for latest and greatest info Oh, that's fantastic. And I just want to, so if you've enjoyed the music at the beginning and ending of this podcast, I always mention that's you. Uh, oh, is it still band? me? Oh, you kept it's still it? you. Wow, look at you. Still you. Nice. Still you. I got that little snippet of mine right before the, the drum Oh, good. Stuff. You still have that. The that's drums. Still the, no, but I haven't changed yeah, any of that's that. key. That's so, key. So uh, I encourage you to come out and check it out. I will put the links in the description. Thank you so much for coming on, my friend. Oh, my it's pleasure, been much too friend. long. Let's make this happen again soon. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's do a check-in after the show. How's that? I would love that. That sounds fantastic. Brother, thank you for keeping the light going, keeping the fire burning for all the Hunter community. Really, I've, I've, I, I told you in the beginning, I just want to end with, you know, even though I haven't been on as much, I've obviously followed. We've been talking so proud of you but also inspired by you that what you're doing with this and it's a gift and uh, we're all, we're all better for it, my friend. Oh, thank you, my brother. Well, thank you for all that you've contributed to this. It's, it's like, it really, you were there at the inception. So I just, uh, thank you so much for all your, 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 your encouragement. And I, I know just, I still get here from people saying they just, that they think you are, your contributions to this community are, is huge. So thank you so much. Thank you to all. Be well. So that's it. I hope that was helpful to you. It was so wonderful to have Vamin back on the podcast. As a reminder, if you're interested in joining us, uh, our live weekly hunter type support group starts September 10th. If you're interested, visit drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash group to save your slot. Uh, Join us on social media. Just visit the website and click on the links at the top for Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, We're a small press, so reviews are super, super helpful. And you guys are awesome. I just Every time I look on Amazon or look on iTunes, there's yet another review. And they're so kind. So I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to do that. There's been so many of you that have done that. Uh, and it really means a lot. And I know it helps spread this work out to get it to more people. So thank you so much. Uh, consider writing a review on iTunes. Or if you've read the book, go to um, Amazon and review the book there. Um, for those of you who are new to the podcast, I created uh, recently created a free five-day mini course that will get you up to speed on all the topics we discuss and we've covered so far. Uh, so you don't have to go through and listen to every single podcast, although I know a lot of you do. Uh, at least it'll get you up to speed. So if you're interested in that, just go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash mini course. Uh, and if you haven't already, uh, pick up your free copy of our latest ebook, ADHD Time Management. It's available on Amazon Kindle, iBooks, Google Play. Uh, just do a search for ADHD Time Management and it'll show up right at the top. And so that's it. Until next time, be well. Be well.